everyone and welcome to this week's family worship. My name is Helen and this is Misty who's just joined me for a quick fuss. Um, it's so great to see you and actually I am glad you're here with me in my kitchen um, because I've been baking. Um, I've tried baking cake but actually it didn't go very well. It, it sunk in the middle. Normally you know how cakes ripe and they're nice and they look nice and springy and tasty. This one just had a big dip in the middle. It doesn't look very tasty at all. So I wonder, just to get us started this week, have you ever tried something or made something that didn't come out quite like you had expected? Why don't you have a chat about this at home and see if you can think of a few examples. Now thinking of these things when we look back can sometimes be a little bit funny when we see how badly things turned out. But I know what went wrong here. I didn't follow any instructions. So I'm going to read some instructions now and hopefully by the end of reading those instructions I'll have a really tasty, delicious, mouth-watering, chocolatey, vanilla, fudgy, caramelly cake on my counter. Let's have a look. Um, melt the chocolate, mix it in with flour and sugar and three eggs and a splash of milk and combine with fork. Add ground almonds, flour and salt and then fold in some blackberries. Tasty. Cook in the oven for 22 minutes or until spongy. Leave to cool. Sprinkle over flakes of chocolate and Smarties and cubes of fudge. Great, this sounds great. I've read the instructions. I have no cake there. But I thought if I read the instructions, my cake would be perfect. What do you mean I've got to follow the instructions and do what they say? Well that's really interesting actually because that's a little bit of what we're talking about in the Bible today. We're going to be looking at another one of the letters um, towards the end of the Bible to, to the churches at the time and it's talking about following through with what the Bible teaches us. Let's take a bit of a look. So we are reading from the book of James today so again that's towards the end of the Bible after the Old Testament after the Gospels the Jesus stories and where some of Jesus's disciples are writing letters to different parts of the church talk about what it's like living a life following Jesus. So the book of James is written by James uh, and he's writing to the 12 tribes of Israel so lots of Jewish people, lots of God's people scattered throughout the world. So let's read. We, if you want to follow along at home we are in James chapter 1, so big number 1, verse 17, little number 17 to the end of that. So once you reach big number 2 that's when it says stop. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Human anger does not produce righteousness God desires. So get rid of all filth and all evil in your lives and humbly accept the words that God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself. Your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Now there's a phrase I love in the passage that we have just read and it says don't just listen to God's word you must do what it says 
in other Bible translations, it says, be doers of the word. Now the word is the Bible, it's God's story, it's God's words written down, inspired by the Holy Spirit and written down by man. And it'd be really easy to read this and quote it back to you and just tell you bits about it and share how much I know about it. But you might think it's wrong if I could tell you all this great stuff about Jesus and how he tells us to love him and love God and love other people. But then you see me in the street and I'm shouting or being rude to a neighbour. You think, what's that about? Now the Bible has lots of examples of ways to live. And if we didn't pay attention to them, well, it would be a little bit like when I was just reading the instructions for the cake mix earlier. By the end of it, nothing would happen if you just read them or think about them. We actually need to do them and follow them through to make change happen or to make a delicious cake or to show our lives are being changed by Jesus. It used the example of looking in a mirror and being fooled by just a quick glance. A bit like if a clown were to dress up and look in the mirror and go, yep, I'm a clown. But then be the most boring person that just talks about business all day. You can say and look like you know what you're talking about. But unless, but unless we are putting what we know into action, it's pointless. So, I wonder, what other instructions or ways of living do you know from the Bible? Can you think of any examples? The most famous ones might be the Ten Commandments, or maybe thinking about some of Jesus' instructions for a while about loving God or loving your neighbours. Have a bit of a think at home, see if you can think of any others. I'm sure you've come up with some really good examples there might be things like the Ten Commandments, as we mentioned, or the Greatest Commandments, love the Lord your God above all else. Or it might be some of Jesus' parables about how we should live and act day to day. Now the bit that actually jumped out for me um, was from the passage we just read in James about loving orphans and loving widows. So my next question for you is, the command that you've picked out, or the instruction that you've picked out, how can you put that into practice? How can you make sure it's an action? So for my example, as I read that verse in the Bible, my mind went to the images that I've seen on the news this week about the situation in Afghanistan, about how people are being forced out of their homes and out of their country because it's no longer safe for them, because they're at risk of being injured or killed. So I want to show that I'm loving these people. The number one action I can do is pray. Ask for God to come and help them and send the right people to them directly because they're a really long way away from me. But the other thing I can do is look at what they need. As they come into this country, they will have nothing with them. So whether that's donating money to charities that can help them, or looking at clothes or toys, or really practical things that they will need every day, and looking to donate them to help. These are some ideas, and it would be really interesting to hear about some of your own. One of the best examples we've got in the Bible for how to put the word into action is Jesus. In John it said the word became flesh. All of the prophecies, everything that scriptures had said about someone coming to save us, that was Jesus, became true when Jesus was born on earth, when he became flesh. And it's his example that can teach us the right way to live. And we don't just want to know about Jesus, we want to know him ourselves, and we want to follow the way he acts. He is our best example for how to live. We're going to worship um, to celebrate that now. So we are going to be singing um, One Way Jesus to remind us that he is the best way and the best example.
Now normally this is the time when we would have a craft or an activity or a way to respond to what we've heard about today. Now, in keeping with today's theme, we're not going to be doing something just at home and thinking about it a little bit more. I want you to get up and the examples that you've talked about today, I want you to go and do it. I would love to hear how you've gotten on this week doing these things and putting what you've talked about into action. Whether that's something personal, like reading the Bible and spending a bit more time with God, or whether it's something mission focused and outward in the world, like helping people that need help. I would love to hear how you've gotten on. Now, I'll see you all again soon. Bye.